Well, I could say hello, but I, you know me, gentlemen, I like to say good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Each of those are covered off in this because we're talking from different parts of the world today, and I, as we always do, and I'm sure that the people who are joining us are from different parts of the world, but specifically also from the Middle East. So I'm Graham Moore, as some of you may know, Certified Master of the Leadership Challenge, and I am with two wise colleagues. Boy, are they wise. They're wiser than me. And I want to encourage them to share their wisdom as they always do today. So good morning where you are, Phoebe. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is a bright morning here. I'm joining you from UAE. Very good. Mohammed, good morning because it's a bright and early day for you in Bahrain. Yes, it is. And good morning to you, Phoebe, Graham, and everyone who is watching us. Yeah, good. So we're, we, uh, we're in this environment where we should be learning. So I think, and I know that you agree, because we can always all learn, can't we? I think the importance of learning cannot be overstressed. Would you agree? Absolutely, yes. So let us talk today, and this has been prompted by the gentleman who was on my that side of me as I'm looking at my screen, Phoebe, who we know is a passionate learner. Aren't you, Phoebe? Of course, yeah. You know, each each day we learn from each other as well as from our um, interactions with people. Uh, yeah, and, and this helps to shape our world. So yep. especially in organizations as well as in families, learning from each other is, is critical. Yeah. And learning drives change. And change leads to growth, which brings satisfaction individually and to the people around you. And we're going to call this, because you would have seen it in the title to our video or podcast, you would have seen that this is going to be called Leaders Create Learners. Leaders Create. Why would leaders create? Well, we'll talk about how they do, but why would they create learners? Why? you got the job. You know what you're supposed to do. You're appointed to do these things. So do it. <laughs> That's a manager. Word. Well, I can think of one thing. Uh, if you stop learning, you stop loving what you do. If everything you do daily um, just adds to your physical stress or effort, and there is no growth on your uh, mental and emotional, let us say, and you're not growing, you're just doing things, uh, you won't consider this um, a worth living job or task or mission. So if you're learning while you're working, just learning anything without going into specific is an intrinsic motivator to keep coming and keep shining and keep doing your best because every day you're becoming better, like Phoebe said. You, you have reminded me of an analogy or a metaphor, perhaps, that we could use. And I could use the word in Arabic for metaphor, because I kind of know it. What's the word in Arabic for metaphor? Teshbir. 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 It's teshbir. So I used to use that, but I haven't lately. So <laughs> this reminded me in what you were saying about something I often said in in my facilitation of, of a range of programs. I used to, and it was always appropriate if there was a tree outside the building. And, of course, we know that if we're in the Middle East, there's not so many trees we can point to outside the building. But I would, I would say, see that tree with all the leaves on it. The tree with the leaves indicates that it is still growing. While ever there's leaves on the tree, it's growing. Big as it is, whatever the size. I like to feel that I'm, a, I'm like that tree, that while ever that tree has got leaves, it will be learning. And I want to be in the situation where I am always learning. And I think that's, a, that's what we all should be doing. We are moving beyond, well beyond the idea of, well, you know what to do, just do it, right? You know, it, it's, it has greater dimension now and possibilities. So 
we know the importance of learning. Phoebe said it's important for, uh, it, it affects the bottom line because it can be translated to not only performance, but also creativity and innovation. And this is very, very important. But what, how do we go about learning in the corporate world? Obviously, getting another degree. All right. Yeah. MBA, or you do your PA, obviously. But um, what else? Yeah. Uh, well, one thing. Phoebe, I know. My got thought process Phoebe, here. Phoebe's got three master's degrees. Here's a little, little, uh, um, reveal three master's degrees. I think that was being a little greedy, but uh, he's got three mm -hmm. master's degrees. And. <laughs> And and I know I met a gentleman some years ago in Saudi who used to call himself Doctor Three M because he had not only his PhD but he had three masters. <laughs> um, but Muhammad also has an MBA, right, and other degrees. Yeah. So whilst we say that academic and formal education is important, it must be relevant to what we're doing. But what what other learning have we got? What other opportunities? Phoebe, you got the floor. Yeah, well, one thing which I just want to highlight is, you know, uh, when we are learning in organization, it helps to be adaptive to the challenges which we see in front of us. You, you know, like as, as we run organization or a family, there is a, a macro perspective as well as a micro perspective, wherever we are in. And this happens... Uh, when we are adaptive to the situations. So now, when, when I say adaptive means, uh, I, I'm just trying to bring that we are, imagine that we are watching a, a, a performance or a, or a drama. Now, we can see what is happening from a balcony as a leader when you are observing what is happening around us. Now, that is one layer. But again, as participants in the drama that is what organization we see we come across the interconnections interactions of people and what people are saying what people are doing in that is what actually mattering more because if a leader is learning that process being with the teams you know the balcony and dance floor perspective where we get more insights and these insights come from one, informal interactions, formal interactions, and creating that dialogue within the organization. And that is where uh, I, I like to bring it again, connecting with the leadership challenge, modeling the way as a leader. Yeah. When am I in balcony? When am I in dance floor where the performance happens? That is a learning. And imagine that as a dance, when you observe from macro, we, we can see, okay, this person may require some learning which uh, which may enhance his performance this person require this kind now that perspective shift happens and this perspective shift enables the dance floor to perform better and that is where the leader is creating that learning environment i will say yes now let's look at a couple of different areas of learning and you know it might be the formal area of learning it might be technical things that, le that leaders learn in a day uh, another program that they can understand or another system that's been something to learn about that sure but i'm going to suggest right now and i hope that we can drop into our conversation some some statements of that will reinforce the specific needs or ways for people who are listening to learn. And here's one that I'm going to drop in right now. We say that leaders learn every day. Leadership is ongoing learning. And this is one learning strategy that I'm going to suggest to people who are leaders who are listening to us now, that when they are going home at the end of the day or in a, some quiet time at the end of the day when they're reflecting on the day that's passed, what did I learn as a leader today? What did I learn as a leader? And then you, when you reflect on that, think, yep, I learned this. I learned that I should listen more or I learned that, that the value of the relationship that I had with this person. And then having said that and reinforced that learning, say, I'm going to make sure that I do that tomorrow because learning doesn't, isn't, it needs embedding, 
right? Any learning needs embedding. So what did I learn today? Remind yourself of that and then make sure you put it into practice again tomorrow. That's one little little strategy that I will set up at this point. But how else do we look? We talk about formal learning, but ongoing learning in practice. Mohammed. Yeah, uh, I remember my manager, my safety manager, and he was a global also expert and author and a very good trainer. And so he, as a newly appointed external expert, he used to teach the team, us and the department, and he do, used to do workshops, etc., to get us on board. And we speak the same language as we spread safety across the company. And he did not only that, teaching us through his uh, well-crafted, well-delivered workshops, but he, I remember saying to me, now I want you, Muhammad, to deliver that workshop. Yes. I, what, 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 did I hear this correct? Did you say me? Yes, you. I'll give you, and I want. I'll watch you, and then I want you to deliver it in the company. Now, looking back and knowing the famous line which says, uh, uh, "When if you want to learn something, teach it." So he made me learn by teaching what he used to teach. Yes. Not only that, he did. He did this to other uh, colleagues, of course, and he also sent me to other courses where there were qualifications, accreditations for safety abroad. He cannot teach that. So he didn't stop the formal. He didn't stop also empowering me to learn. I learned the best by actually doing what he wanted me to do. But he made sure I don't just do it. I do it and I learn uh, in, the, in the process. So tying this into the title of our session today, Leaders Create Learners. So what he here's, here's the way a leader creates learners in this situation. He or she will say, I want you to present this information that I've just taught you. I want you to do it. And as we know, when you do it, when you present it, that's when you start to really learn this. So leaders create learners by having them do what and present what they have learned. And Which is also, uh, if you look across the five uh, uh, practices, it's all there, like enable others to act, is also a, a learning tool. You can make your uh, uh, team do it. Yeah. And now, whilst we, we always invariably and importantly tie in what we're talking about to the five practices, let me just bring it back a little to one of the, the, the practice before that. And this is challenge the process. So what is involved in learning in regard to challenge the process? Well, leaders create a learning environment. As you've just given us that indication and you, the example that you gave of the leader saying, okay, now I want you to deliver this program. And when you deliver it, when you prepare it, before you deliver it, you're going to learn. But the other thing that, that the leaders in, in, in an everyday situation in creating learners is to firstly talk about the importance of learning in an informal way all the time. And then say to them, so what did you learn today? You know, the leader might then take that to as a weekly meeting item on the agenda. Item number four on the agenda for the weekly meeting is, okay, I want someone to share with us today one significant learning that they had in the past week. One significant learning that they had. What does this do? It gives them an opportunity to reflect and, and embed the learning but it also gives them the opportunity to share the learning with other people in the team so that they learn from this as well. And one final comment before I then swing it back to Phoebe is this, that when we make a mistake, we make a mistake. Yes. When we make a mistake, what should the leader be saying automatically? You're fired. No. What should he be saying? <laughs> what does the leader say? What did you learn from that? Yes. What did you learn? Now, I'm going to share another ex one example before I head back to, to Phoebe. And this is at a, a leadership challenge convention some years ago. The man who was CEO of the WD-40 company said, we don't make mistakes in our company. Oh, what? What do you mean you don't have, make mistakes? He said, we have learning moments. 
And he said, every little while you'll hear someone call out, oh, I've just had a learning moment. And what this this it says two things. It says this culture accepts that we can make mistakes. Allow, allow not critical, dangerous <laughs> mistakes where someone gets injured. I'm sorry to bring that up, Muhammad, but, yeah, we've got to look out for our health <laughs> and safety. But they have a culture where they can make a mistake and then learn and share to others what they have learned. Phoebe. Yeah, uh, Graham, I just was trying to bring, you know, quite often what I have observed is in many organizations, uh, we have seen uh, the one of the values as um, openness to ideas, openness to uh, uh, share things in the workplace. What in many places happens is there is no openness. And this creates an environment of limitations within the workplace. And what, again, if imagine that if there is an openness where people are, especially people in positions of authority are listening, imagine the ideas it can bring in. Imagine what he or she can learn in that process. What can, and again, connecting it to the challenging the process, it, it actually helped to challenge the process in such a fashion that more new innovation happens in the workplace. Because what... I'm very passionate with this aspect because what I have seen is sometimes the leaders or people in positions of power shut the staff members from that openness concept. Yes, it is on the walls, but it is not teased. And this creates one of the biggest learning gap in most organizations. Strategy doesn't work because the learning gap is huge. And cost of money being spent on things which are of not priority becomes the fashion in the workplace. And this is a creating what we call, instead of openness, the closeness of culture. I will like to call it the toxicity in the workplace. So when we have that openness to learning, as, as, as we discussed, leaders, Create learners. Learners means listening to these voices. And that is actually protecting new leadership. And I want to reiterate this factor that how can we develop more leaders by listening to them? And especially the people who hold power in that space. And yes. Absolutely. Yes. Mohammed. I wanted to say that uh, if you are scared, uh, that they might take the learning to their ad advantage and, you know, b bypass you or, uh, I mean, take a full advantage of that and take your position or whatever. I, I don't remember a leader who taught me that I wanted to uh, use this against him. In fact, I saw the opposite happening. People who keep the learning and do not allow their people, uh, their uh, team to learn just do 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 they are more susceptible to being removed and replaced because what will my mentality be if you're not teaching me i'll get the learning from other sources whether you like it or not and without your knowledge i will get more knowledge so you are encouraging people actually to uh, betray you to, for the lack of a better word if you are not teaching them if you teach them you will always be above, you will always be ahead, and everybody will always want to work with you, not with one, anyone else. So it's exactly the opposite, I reckon, ironically. Let them learn with you. Don't just make them work, work, work. Or do, 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 that you just said a moment ago. I, I will remember that those three words that managers, oh, some people like that say, just do this, do, do, do. So one other aspect of this, which which you're kind of alluding to, and I will express it in a slightly different way in what you just said, and that is this, that these days with gen, the different generations, Gen X, Y, Z, and whichever one is going to come next, but those people who are relatively new to the workforce, unlike the three of us who are relatively more experienced in the workforce, but those who are less ex less experienced in the workforce have will say when surveys are conducted that they want to learn they want to advance themselves 
They want to grow. Now, the problem often is that is in place when the ma manager, I've used that word again, wants to restrict their learning, either because he or she feels threatened by what they might achieve and might, might become, or because they don't understand enough about it themselves. So we should be, as I've said it with our title for the today, it's leaders create learners. And if this is a new, new joiner in the organisation or a new joiner on the team, you know, a, a leader can be saying to that person, so what are your objectives about learning? This is a learning environment. How can I help you achieve your objectives by a learning process? What's going to work best for you and how can I help you? That's a simple way of setting it up with a new joiner, new learning, new joiner to the team or the company. Also, there is another way of learning. It, it is subtle, but uh, it enlightens. For example, it's uh, telling the, the people who work with you why we do it. When you teach them not only how to do it, but the rationale behind it and why we do it, they have a bulb you know, um, lighting for themselves. For example, the other day I gave my daughter a task, which I can do, but I wanted to uh, her to get a skill. It was on the laptop and she had to do uh, copies of several documents. And then I interfered, interfered in the middle and I said, hey, you know that there is a shortcut to do this function just by using these two key uh, keys on the keyboard said, really? I said, yeah, just do this and do this. And she said, wow, I can finish the job faster this way. So I taught her two things, the shortcut, and also that she should think in a mindset of making work faster, any work faster, if I just knew what is behind this task, what is behind this tool, what can I learn more? So Number one is teaching. Number one is teaching them that how to learn also. So there are so many subtle ways you can make your team learners. Can I, can I just pick up on one aspect that you touched on at the start of this, this part of the conversation? And two critical factors are involved in any learning or transference of learning to other people. And you touched on this. You used these words. And the first one is the Why? The why. When people understand the why, why should I do this? Why do I need to lift this lever and turn it this? You know, why do I need to have this going on? When they understand that, it gets into their purpose and their motivation. Once they understand the why, so why should I learn? Let's put it in that context. Why should I learn? Well, it's going to advance your career. It's going to enhance the work that you're doing. You're going to be better at what you're doing. It's going to make life easier. So these are the whys which are important. And sometimes in a learning context, we need to explain the whys, right? We need to be specific about why it's important for you to do this. Why is it important for you to learn? And then the next element is the how. So we, we're saying, well, here's what needs to be done. Otherwise, the aircraft will crash. Uh, so this is the these are the hows. You need to make sure that this is in place and that. Uh, and when you understand the how, that aligns with the why, then you're getting a really good, really good result. So in in any learning situation, as facilitators, we present the why you should learn this. And in our leadership challenge programs, we set out the fact that the world needs more leaders. We know that there is a desperate cry for people to become leaders and most organisations around the world, like around 85%, say their biggest need is leadership. So that's that's the why. Why do we should we focus on leadership? And then the next is the how. How do we do that? We follow the five practices. We, we go through all of this so that people say, oh, and it all yeah. connects. So in any, whether it's an informal learning process, whether it's discussion in the, in the team meetings or wherever, keep those two elements in mind. So it's certainly, firstly, the people understand why we should learn something, and then we go through the how, how this should be done. But we, you, 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 you covered that or alluded to that, uh, sorry, uh, in, in your last comment, uh, Mohammed. Phoebe! Speak to me. Yeah, this, this, this reminded me, Graham, when you were sharing that, it reminded me. It is actually inspiring the team, you know, inspiring the shared vision from the challenge, which is coming into picture. Yeah. You know, where are we going? Why are we doing that? And that 
actually also in one way or another encourages the heart. Okay, this is the reason why we are doing it. This may help us. This may enable us to act. And these are all connected together. And I see the importance of how important the learning process is for any organization as individuals. Yeah. And again, reiterating leadership is everyone's business. So is learning. Yeah, when you say that, it reminds me of some years ago in a different learning context that I was in, I was shown the process, do this, and it was there was a structure to it. And I'm thinking, what, what, why, what's, what's this? I didn't understand it. And the reason I didn't understand it was that I hadn't been told the why. It just so it didn't click with me. It didn't make sense. This is about basic adult learning, really. We've got to understand why should this be done? And then here are the hows, here are the steps. Oh, okay. So coming back to what I've said earlier, once we get from people the reason for learning and then get down to those steps of the how things can be done. Yeah. Also, um, Graham and Phoebe and everybody who's watching us, we might have uh, alluded that the learning means that you as a leader is the only source of learning. But you hinted somewhere today, Graham, that it's not the, the case. You can be, as a leader, the source of learning, but also they, your team members, can be also the source of learning. You will teach them a few things, but also they also will learn, and you will encourage them to, to, to share to uh, seek something that they have learned. And in a recent uh, project, and my team members, they have to do some task repeatedly every day. So I said, if we keep doing this every day to finish the contract and with them not learning, just doing, then they, they won't grow, they, won't, they will lose motivation. So I distributed fancy notes and pens, special ones. And I said, every day I want you, when you finish the day, write one thing only you learn from today and then in, after one week we gathered in a cafe and i asked each one of them please share your notes yeah. uh, well the first attempt it was a bit not so organized but it was very raw and innocent and uh, authentic and each one shared something different they are doing the same thing but each one shared something different it was learning for them but also for others so learning can become the whole lots of things, the source. You can be the source. They can be the source. So let's harness that. Hmm. Okay. Let's harness that, that idea that, that you're talking about. Because remember, we're saying leaders create, create learners. So let's just suggest this, that a leader could say to his team members, or he could suggest this as a concept that they set up, that I want you to establish a learning pod or a learning group. I don't mind what word, you, what term you use, but this is three or four or five people who get together, and we can do they can do it over Zoom on a regular basis, and it should be something that there is some commitment to making it happen. So even if you say to four or five people, "Hey, I want to keep learning. What? Can, how can we learn from each other? Let's set aside." 20 minutes every two weeks. I don't care what the time frame is. It should be more than five, but 20 minutes or an hour. I don't care. And, and set a time that we all connect and we all share something that we have learned since our last interaction together. I learned this. I never heard, but this, this, and this. Wow, this was a revelation for me. I didn't know that if I pushed this button on the laptop that life would be easier. So this is where we share the learning. And so if the leader can create a le le learning groups, he need not be involved. He can be involved or she. But if they have self-motivated groups, that's fantastic. And then they could bring that back to the team meeting and say, here are three powerful things that, that we learned. But here's another element whilst we, and again, this feeds into what you had said, Mohammed. We're calling this leaders create learners. But I have had leaders say to me, and I know how true this is, I've had them say to me, I learn from my people every day. You what? I thought you knew everything. 
I learn <laughs> from my people every day. Leaders learn as well as creating other leaders and helping other people to learn as well. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask you for a wrap-up comment on learning from uh, creating a learning environment and the importance of learning. So let me start with Phoebe, one of the biggest learners that we know. No, I, 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 I just like, like to say that when I see this, I don't know anything. That, that's the beauty of learning. When we, when we see things, we, we only know a little. And, and yeah, so I think that curiosity, create that curiosity in mind. Yes. And see what 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 is that um, helping us to learn each situation. And yes. I want to give uh, learners who are listening to us, three things, the three W's, what, so what, and now what. Remember, what, so what, and now what, in, in my learning environment. Yes, well done, Muhammad. Uh, if you're listening to this, I want you to remember the time you felt great when someone taught you. You are listening to this and you remember someone who was a leader in a way that he made you learn. I also remember when I learned from my manager, I cannot forget how he made me feel until now. And the look on my daughter's face when she shined after knowing another piece of information which made her work better so i want to end with this it's worth it maya angelo said people will forget what you said people will forget what you did but they will never for never forget how you made them feel and if you are a leader who create learners you are making them feel really good about themselves about work and about you here's another aspect to this Leaders, we know, create learners. And if we ask people, tell me about someone who inspired you when you were much younger as a leader. Tell me about who, who was it? And they might say it was my mother or my father. They might say it was an uncle. They might say, in, in my case, I think it was my an uncle. They might say it was a teacher I had. And if you then drill it down further and say, well, what, why do you say they were great leaders? I learned so much from them. <laughs> in so yes, yes, ways. yes. <laughs> All right. So learning is ongoing. We are learning every day, and we want you, who are listening to us now, to create learners. And you can contact us. Please do Graham at at Leadership Challenge Middle East dot com. Please send us your emails. And as Phoebe always says, subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> I beat you. Uh, Thank you so much for your valuable time and your wisdom. And we will be back again next week with some more information to help you, who's ever listening, become a better leader every day. Thank you again, gentlemen. Have a great week. Thank you.